Okay, so just scrying the phrase continuance of divine joy, which is Mayam di Mozod. So the first thing I'm feeling is I'm just feeling a lightness and it's it's interesting right now because the way I'm currently undergoing current circumstances is that they're pretty heavy, but it's almost like um, if you heat up, let's say, a rock to a very high temperature and it starts to glow, it's like I'm feeling this, this glow through the heaviness. And just as a rock will retain its heat for a very long time after you've done that, so too does this glow continue. And the what I'm being told by the angels is, is that as God wills it, so will that joy continue for for as long as as he wills it. So, and I'm being given this sense of like this, um, like there's the sense of falling and it's a little bit like a roller coaster, but more like, more like diving, let's say like a bird, right? Like that freedom to both dive, but also soar back up. But also there's this orbit, the, the, the truer sense is that like it's this orbit around the earth. So it's almost as if God is saying here that you can, if you take things from the complete perspective of the earth, things are going badly in some senses, but this gives us the opportunity to do a lot of good and to enjoy ourselves while doing it, right? So it's not only, so it's this combination of what you might call hedonia, which is feeling good and pleasure with that, with eudaimonia, which is this good feeling of doing good works, which is, you could call it satisfaction, or the unique thing that you can bring to, it's like the, the, the sense of feeling good for having done the right thing or a job well done. So look it up. It's E-U-D-A-I-M-O-N-I-A. -I -I so it's, 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 it, daimon means spirit. So it's like that, like that true spirit. So it's that good spirit combined with good fortune in the sense, a little bit. So I'm sort of mixing, it's sort of like a, if you're to, if you're an astrologer, it's like fifth house, 11th house axis. But imagine those things coming together and, you know, right at that, at the middle of that pole. And it's like, okay, the delight and f good feeling of doing good and how that really works through your system. Okay. And it gives you a lightness. It makes other things worth it. It makes other things that we have to do suddenly feels like I want to do and it feels good to do. So if you could combine that with, with, if you could get this axis to encompass all of the other parts of your life, um, things are very good and they last. So, so I'm asking what else there is to be seen here. And there's this sense that I'm being like lifted up and it's like getting more into that divine sense. So in like a more of a heavenly sense. So God, of course, being the God of both heaven and earth. And it's like, oh, it's super complicated right now. There's a lot of things going on at once. Once, first and foremost, there's a lot of light, but there's this, there's like this roiling pressure. It's like when I did Freder Surat's um, call. It's like that same roiling kind of light, this this glorious heat. This uh, it's it's Einsof hour, 
it's limitless light if you're into the Kabbalah, but it's it's this light as it we are able to perceive it in this world. So it's like that liminal space between the world of Adam Kadmon and Keter. And this, I'm being told, is what God truly delights in and is always happening and is always going on just there at the vastest expanses of our imagination. You know, imagine that except at the divine level. And that is what God truly delights in and is always there. So it's a very... Um, it's a very empowered feeling, but at the same time, it's, you know, I've, I've, I know I'm doing like a masculine-ish or an aggressive, let's put it that way, gesture here, but it's, everything is like sort of coming together and locking in. Um, and it's, it's this, this joy of perfection, this eternal perfection. Um, yeah, and I'm feeling it very strongly in my crown chakra. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. And it's like I'm seeing sort of like these dark liquids pour forth. And I'm being told in, being told in this way to equate it to this potential for what we would call the philosopher's stone. Right, so again, we had this idea of the heated up stone. Now I'm sort of seeing it. And the true issue with people is that we do not use ourselves as vessels well enough yet to for God to pour in this potential to create the Philosopher's Stone. We do not structure ourselves very well. So we need to continue to pray, continue to use our own faculties, our wisdom, our reason, and our humility and all of the the main seven virtues to especially humility um but not humility such that it turns into sloth and not humility such that it turns into a lack of agency and so we need to use these tools whichever path we're on to allow this glorious potential that God is literally working so hard to pour forth such that we can become living philosopher's stones. So like, if, so that our soul can merge with this divine love, this divine potential, this divine creative power to thereby rectify all of creation and to advance it and to develop it whichever words suit you best. So this is wonderful. And he's saying this is the true continuance, right? If, if we want to partake of this continuing joy, continuing divine joy, then we need to rectify ourselves with God so that he can pour forth and create the philosopher's stone within us. And by the way, recreate it by continuing this process because yesterday's philosopher's stone is not necessarily tomorrow's so this is uh, very beautiful and i'm very grateful for all of this so thus ends the vision